Okay, so I want to uh, I want to read uh, Robert's comment here in the in the chat room. He says, "I would say I don't speak for Arminianism, but I would say that God wants all to be saved, and His ultimate plan was for ju just that. He called predestined all to be saved, but not not all called accepted the call. But that's not what the Scripture says, is it? Whom He foreknew, He called, and whom He called." Or yeah, who, that's, who, that's who, Romans again, yeah. Okay, and then also we have. Uh, we have in Romans 9. Uh, it seems as though Paul says exactly the opposite. What shall we say then? This I'm in verse 14. What shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then, it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on wh whom he desires and he hardens whom he desires. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault for whom he resists, who resist his will? On the contrary, who are you, O man? who answers back to God. The thing molded will not say to the molder, why did you make me like this? Will it? Or does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from this same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use? What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? And he did so to make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he also called, not from among Jews only, but also from among the Gentiles. Okay, here, here's, here's one possible way uh, to maybe think of this. From our perspective, from our limited human, each one of us as individuals, disciples of Yeshua, from our perspective, we are to operate that God wills that everybody we meet would be saved. We have what we can't because we can't judge otherwise. Yeah. It's not for me to judge. I can't. I can't. Uh, I, I can't imagine myself or uh, uh, presume upon myself that I am a judge of other people's souls. That I determine whether or not someone uh, is with the Lord forever or absence forever. That's <laughs> that's Yeshua's job. He's been given all authority in heaven and earth to to execute. That and we know that his just uh, his judgment will be pure, and uh, he knows all the facts, and it will be a righteous in according with God's holy and just and merciful character. Uh, so, from an operations perspective of the Great Commission, Matthew twenty-eight, go make disciples of all nations. Our assumption is that people are going to be receptive. That's that's our operating perspective. However. That does not, does not mean that, therefore, just because we're supposed to always hope and be and pray for people and to not judge those branches that look like they're broken off, it, hoping that God will bring them back in by faith, um, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to be saved. When, in fact, we know that not everybody's going to be saved. So... So I think that, that the, there might be people feeling like, well, I've heard, you know, well, you're, that's a mean God. You know, God wants everybody to be saved. We don't, uh, we are to act as if everybody is, is uh, a candidate for salvation, right? That's because we can't, we don't know otherwise. We have no means to judge someone's heart.